Before I discuss the initialization of the attributes of an object, just a quick revision on the previous video. Notice when you declare an object, uh, we highlighted two parts of the declaration. The first part is the student B, which declares a pointer B that is ready to point to an object, which is an instance of student. So student B simply just declares the pointer. Then the part new student allocates memory for the object and puts into that object the attribute surname, name, student number and age. But notice at this stage, at the end of this declaration, these four attributes are uninitialized. They do not have values yet. The nice thing of, of classes, which makes it totally different to normal data types, is that inside the class you can add methods. Now the first method that you will always have inside a class is called the constructor. So the method you see there, public student, is called the constructor and generally it is used to initialize the attributes of the object. But we'll look at every, each part of this constructor in the coming slides. Okay, let's look at the name of the constructor. You always start with the word public. We'll get to the meaning of public in a later video. Then the name of the, the constructor is always exactly the same as the name of the class. So you notice it's student in both cases. You might note that there's nothing like void or int or double between public and student. The constructor is the only method that you cannot put in a data type. So you just need to say public and the name. You don't need to include void, etc. before student. Okay, like any method, the constructor then also takes parameters. In this case, we have surname, name, STN, and A. Now, with some investigation, you'll see that there's a mapping between those four parameters and the four attributes of the class. We'll discuss how this works in the next slide. Okay, the first two parameters are surname and name. Now the values that they bring in are used to initialize the attributes surname and name of class. It's very important to note that now we have two sets of names here that have the same name. We've got the attributes surname and name at the top and we've got the two parameters surname and name. To distinguish between these two, in the method we say this.surname is assigned to surname. The this.surname always refers to the attribute of a class. So, and then the surname in this case will then be the parameter of this method. So whenever you want to specify that you're talking about the attribute, if there's some room for confusion, you say this.surname or this.name. So in this case, the parameter that comes in that value is assigned to the two attributes, surname and name. Where we don't have the possibility of confusion, notice in this case the two parameters are STN and A, we don't use to, need to use the this. So we say ST number is assigned to STN. So the attribute ST number is assigned to the value of the parameter and the same is then done with age. Age is assigned to the value of the parameter A. Okay, so we've defined the constructor inside the class definition. Now let's look at what impact it has when you actually declare a new object. So here we're declaring the object B. Notice in the earlier declaration we simply said student B is assigned to new student. Uh, where student B declared the pointer and new student uh, reserved the memory and created the object with uninitialized attributes. Notice that student open bracket close bracket resembles from the first semester where you call a method. So what you can see is that the part of this declaration is now calling the constructor student, the bold faced part. And because this constructor now had four parameters when we declare uh, object B inside the declaration we call constructor student and we send through Grayling John the student number and the age 19, which then automatically initializes the attributes 
to those values. This is simply to go back to the class definition and to see what happens. So those four values come in as parameters and they are assigned to surname, name, student number and age. I've shown a different class here. This is a class uh, for a bank account, which has the name of the account and the current balance of the bank account. And this is just to discuss something regarding the constructor. When you initialize a bank account, it is quite obvious that the balance always starts at zero. So the initializing value of balance is always zero. We call this a default initial value. So notice what happens in the constructor. When you create, every time you create a bank account, you don't need to send through a specific amount for the balance because you know it's always zero. So the parameter now is only name because every bank account will have a unique name. But inside the constructor, we simply say balance is assigned to zero and we have one less parameter. So when you declare the object at the bottom of the screen, you simply just send through JH Kraling. You don't need to send through zero because it's always zero.